Man, I was just stargazing when I looked up, remembered that there was a vacuum surrounding us. We live inside of a vacuum somehow. Isn't there a vacuum in space? I find out outer space has very low density and pressure and is the closest physical approximation of a perfect vacuum. But no vacuum is truly perfect, not even in interstellar space, where there are still a few hydrogen atoms per cubic meter. Okay, what's a vacuum? A space entirely devoid of matter. Emptiness, void, nothingness, right? That's what a vacuum is. We live in a vacuum. I mean, if we lived in a vacuum, wouldn't the atmosphere just get sucked into space, right? This powerful vacuum, this infinite vacuum that we live in, would just suck the atmosphere from right off of our Earth. So I want to visualize this vacuum. We got our atmosphere in light blue. Then we have the vacuum of space. And we're just sitting in a vacuum, right? That's what we're doing. Just spinning around in a vacuum. How does the atmosphere not get pulled off? And of course, we already know this is coming. The answer we get is gravity. Ooh. <laughs> gravity. Wow. Earth's atmosphere is an extremely thin skin surrounding our planet. What force keeps it from flying off into space? The answer is always gravity. Anything that's unexplainable, gravity. Gravity. And I'm thinking, we're putting a lot of faith into this theory of gravity that's only a few hundred years old. Never been tested. Never been experimented with. I mean, gravity has never been recreated in a lab. There's no accounts of actually finding a gravitational wave. We don't have anything in this physical realm that tells us gravity exists. But we'll go along. Because, right, Einstein was a genius, right? Newton was a genius, right? They're all geniuses. That's what they told you. That's what they put in your in your little history science books. Now, Einstein was once asked how it felt to be the smartest man alive. And Einstein's reply was, I don't know. You'll have to ask Nikola Tesla. So now I'm going to go over, talk to Nikola Tesla, and see what he has to say. He tells me today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments. And they wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure which has no relation to reality. I mean, how true could that statement be? Nikola Tesla is the true genius. He says Einstein's relativity work is a magnificent mathematical garb which fascinates, dazzles, and makes people blind to the underlying errors. The theory is like a beggar clothed in purple whom ignorant people take for a king. Its exponents are brilliant men, but they are metaphysicists rather than scientists. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Tesla, for telling us how much bullshit can be found in Einstein's work. Because you knew that way back then. So thank you for reassuring my belief system, right? So if gravity doesn't exist, then what's the force that pulls us down to the earth? Why do things fall down instead of up? And the answer is electromagnetism.
Researcher and author Anthony Patch states, quote, In short, the accurate model of the mechanisms governing the functioning of our known universe is that of electromagnetism, not gravity. What is mistaken for and therefore labeled as gravity are in fact, and this has been thoroughly peer-reviewed, magnetic lines of force and the actions of accelerated charged particles moving at various velocities. Additionally, these same electromagnetic forces act in identical fashion, whether one is measuring actions taking place between particles at the quantum level or on a planetary scale. What has been detected by LIGO and other similar experiments preceding it are in fact magnetic lines of force and the movements and actions of accelerated charged particles, such as electrons and protons, among many others. As for black holes, supermassive, twin or otherwise, none have been experimentally reproduced in the laboratory. None have been measured in terms of electromagnetism. None have been moved from the chalkboards of theory to factual and provable constructs nor mechanisms. Many scientists will back me up on this statement. To define what are labeled as black holes, one must look beyond the again theoretical labels of dark matter and dark energy, neither of which have been proven to exist, and yet are considered as constructs of black holes. Looking beyond, one finds plasma, what Tesla labeled the ether, comprising the so-called vacuum of space. This ether is electrically charged plasma. Black holes are a gathering due to magnetic attraction of this electric plasma. This is not gravity, sucking in all matter and light as mainstream scientists describe black holes. Einstein's work, Gravity, was hijacked for profiteering. Tesla's work, The Ether and Electric Universe, is the real science hidden away and employed at CERN. We're, we're wondering how much of our reality in a scientific view is based on a faulty premise. Now, gravity is heralded as ruling the universe. And from the time of Galileo to uh, Newton up to Einstein and then into modern day physics, we have been set up with this concept that because an apple fell from a tree, there is this thing called gravity. We're looking at a system of science that is giving us energy through uh, gravitics and they, they are using explosion engines and burning coal and doing everything necessary in our world to make this place a hellhole. Uncovering the missing secrets of magnetism. Here we have a standard CRT tube with a grid with a spiral projected onto it, which is being taken off of an old camcorder that's pointing at a wall with a grid on it with a you can see a clockwise spiral. So I have this camera, old camera, hooked into an old television set, taking a look at a clockwise spiral. Now let's take an enormous two inch by one inch N45 neodymium iron boron magnet and let's show you centripetal and centrifugal vortex movements as we approach the CRT tube. Here we go with a magnet. Now discuss this in a second but first let's look at what's at the center here can you see what's at the center you see those scintillating hairs that are moving off in a clockwise direction okay now let's flip the magnet the other direction and let's see what sort of spot we get on our CRT tube this way oh surprise surprise look we're getting counterclockwise movement. I don't know if you can see that very clearly. There we go. Take a look at that. Now, how do I know which polarity I have pointed here? Well, let's zoom out and take a look at our magnet. Now we have, of course, a clockwise pattern projected from the camera, from the camcorder to the television set. So let's see what this side of the magnet does to a clockwise spiral on the CRT. It moves it in the same direction. And look at the edge definition of where the black void is, because the, the black void is being caused by the centrifugal magnetic velocity. Here you can see the little spirals in the center of the white spot in the middle with the... You can see that uh, we're moving... Our centrifugal field is moving 
uh, clockwise, but our centripetal field, which is at the middle of the magnet, is moving exactly opposite. It is moving counterclockwise. And we'll do a lot more CRT demonstrations showing quote-unquote repulsion and quote-unquote attraction of magnets against the CRT tube, which is emitting uh, dielectric uh, lines of uh, force that are contacting the phosphorus on the inside of the tube. That is why the magnet is uh, such a great demonstrator against the CRT tube and uh, this is the first example you've ever seen of someone proving beyond any shadow of a doubt using a CRT tube that the centrifugal on a magnet meaning the outside rim edge of the magnet is moving absolutely opposite to the center of the magnet the centripetal returning and I used it using a geometric projection from the camcorder off of a grid paper on the wall. Now let's actually turn these magnets in on. Oh my god, look at that. It looks like a single magnet, but this is actually two. In other words, when you look at either pole like that, it looks exactly the same thing underneath the ferro cell as it does with one magnet. Oh, how shocking. That would be a proof of a platonic incommensurability. But this is the exact same thing the report in their own video is seeing. You actually see a vortex of binary objects rotating around a point, a null point of uh, maximum acceleration and inertia. Is this any proof of Einstein's uh, gravity waves? No, it's simplex electromagnetic theory. It's very, very simplex electromagnetic theory. This doesn't prove Einstein at all. It actually, all it does is it reinforces Tesla reinforces James Clerk Maxwell. You see, Einstein didn't invent a damn thing. And what little ideas he did have, he stole from Henri Poincaré and others. There's actually many books out there about that. This is just classical electromagnetic field theory that explains the observations of Tesla and Maxwell. I mean, <laughs> these idiots spent millions and millions of dollars and they want millions of more funding, which is why they, they made a huge press announcement. Because they want more money for more funding, because that will, you know, pad their jobs for the next 20 years. And they're going to be looking for something that has already been explained 80 years ago by classical electromagnetic theory. Well, my God, let's reinvent the wheel and ask for a bunch of money for it. So today's huge scientific announcement was nothing other than a pile of crap by a bunch of brainless scientists with more money and more gear than brains looking for plenty of funding to keep their asses in work. Oh my god, what a timeless story of stupidity and ignorance. And you might be wondering, why would they hide this from us? Why would they make up gravity to hide the electromagnetic universe? And the answer is free energy. Tesla says electric power is everywhere present in unlimited quantities, and can drive the world's machinery without the need of coal, oil, gas, or any other of the common fuels. Nikola Tesla knew that we could manipulate the electromagnetic field here on Earth, the thing we call gravity, and we could use it as free energy to produce anything we'd like. But the thing is, the powers don't like that at all. Because remember, they own all of the energy companies. 9-11 was a false flag so that we could go into, for two reasons. One, to go in for oil, and two, to set up a central bank, right? The thing is, we don't need coal, oil, gas, or any of the common fuels. If there's free energy that we can manipulate in our favor in order to obtain free energy, but obviously, they won't allow that to happen because we're just stupid little people who need to buy everything like consumers so that they can build their empire off of our labor, hiding free energy from us so that we can't go out on our own and do our own thing. We're dependent on their energy. You see why they would hide this from us? They wouldn't be making trillions of dollars in the fossil fuel industry. So if you doubt the electromagnetic universe that we live in, take a look at time and space, Einstein's science, the gravity myth, and our electromagnetic reality. I'm going to link this video to in the description, and I expect all of you guys to watch it 
So I'm calling BS on gravity. Einstein was a fraud and Nikola Tesla was a hero.